Hi, this is Fat Baby Dave, and today we're going to be learning how to draw with Biro. Biros can make a really interesting and bold effect, and there's no need for expensive materials because there's always a Biro lying around somewhere. We're going to look at key aspects that differ when drawing with a Biro, and tips to how to go about using a Biro to create beautiful artwork. First, I'm going to show some artworks that I've done using Biro. First we have ones where it's just biro straight onto paper and no other material used at all and you can get a similar level of detail as you can with a pencil or using biro over the top of a painted layer. One of the advantages of using biro is that it will work over any other medium. Now we're going to look at some of the advantages and challenges of using biro as a drawing medium. The most obvious one is that unlike pencil, biro will not rub out. So you need to think more carefully about the marks you're going to make, as those will be there permanently. However, an advantage to this is that you can still use pencil to do your underdrawing and map out all of the details and proportions. And once you've done your drawing in Biro, you can easily rub away the pencil marks that are remaining without affecting the Biro drawing. If you use a lot of Biro in one concentrated area, then before it's dried it can smudge, so you have to be careful with where you place your hand. This does mean that you're able to make some rudimentary blending effects, but overall Biro really can't blend in a way at all similar to how pencil can. By being especially aware of the amount of pressure that you're putting down onto the paper, you can actually get quite a good range of light and dark tones using a simple Biro. Here you can see that it is actually possible to do incredibly light tones. To maintain consistency, if you notice that the pen has stopped working, then dab a little bit on the side before you start going again, as the ink is probably blocked up inside of the pen, so more will come out than you intend to once that block is released. Now we'll look at the types of marks that you can use with Biro to give variety to the texture of your drawing. Firstly we have cross hatching, which is one of the easiest ways to keep your shading light while using a Biro and that just consists of interspersed straight lines. Secondly, you could just use lines as shading or to add texture to a certain area. Thirdly, you can use block shading with biros, but it's harder to get all of the area filled in without it going incredibly dark. Because biros don't blend, it's also harder to get a soft edge, so you tend to end up with a darker, harsher edge on than you would do with something like pencil. Finally, you can use whatever type of marks you want, such as dots or squiggles or circles, anything that makes sense to you. The restrictions of using a biro, such as not being able to blend, can actually open the door to a much more varied style of drawing using marks that you otherwise wouldn't think of using. Finally, I'm going to show you one of my speed drawings of using a biro, so you can see the entire process in action. Drawing detailed areas, such as the eyes, is quite similar to using a pencil. However, for shading on the face, I mostly use cross hatching, as it's easier to keep the shading light and not overpower, and is also the easiest way to not accidentally go darker than you intended. However, on the hair, this isn't so much of a problem. So that's everything, thanks very much for watching and hit me up with any questions or comments and I'd love to see any artwork that you've created using Virus. Thanks very much, see you later.